Hello everyone, this is David, and today I'd like to go over how to spin up your own quick and dirty website with a custom domain name if you'd like, and free hosting. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want to point out is that for this particular example, we're going to be using a custom domain name, although you don't need to even use one if you don't want to, and this will be the only cost of the entire process. So for the sake of this video, we're going to assume that you have your own .com or whatever. In this case, I'm using a domain called melee.center, although by the time you're watching this video, it's very likely that I won't own this domain anymore because it's almost expired. So with that out of the way, let's go to the first step after you own your own domain and you have purchased it through a domain registrar like I want my name, which is one of the favorites that I use. Next, you'll want to jump onto GitHub and make an account. Um, and you'll want to create a new repository. Name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it melee-center. I'm just going to call it example website. And you can set it to private if you'd like. In fact, if you're making a personal website, I would encourage you to use a private repository, although it can be public if you'd like. We'll create a readme file because why not? Uh, no git ignore for now, and then no license for now. So I'm going to click create repository. So the first step is already finished. We have our repository with a single commit of our readme.md. So from here, we're going to go to Netlify, and you'll want to create a Netlify account. This is also free, although you can upgrade it for additional for additional features. We're going to click Sites, and then Add New Site, Import an Existing Project. And here, you're going to connect to your GitHub account, and it's going to pull in all the projects that you have, and it's going to let you pick one. So in this case, I want to pick Melee.Center, which is the one I just created. And we're going to call this, we'll say Master as the branch deploy. And then we're going to just leave everything else default. We're not going to change the base directory or build commands or anything like that. Just click Deploy Site. Okay. This is the second step. Now, the only thing on this website right now is a readme.md file. So now we're going to get to the actual the core of the website itself, all the files for it. And we're going to use a website called HTML5 Up. But there are a variety of websites that offer free HTML5 templates, which you'll want to use to make your website. For the free version, the only stipulation is you need to attribute the website to the creator. In this case, they'll want you to link back to HTML5, but there's a ton of really awesome templates here. So if you are interested in one, just click Live Demo, and it will open up in a new tab and kind of give you a portrait of what it looks like in tablet, what it looks like in mobile, and what it looks like in desktop. This is nice to look at. Just decide what kind of website you want. In our particular example, we'll be using this template by HTML5 up. And when you click download, it's going to give you some information about the creator of this site. And if you'd like a non-attribution version, you can use this version, which is only $19. Pretty good. So I've already installed it. I've already downloaded it, I should say. I have extracted the .zip, and here are all the files. So this is the folder directory. The next thing you'll want to do is install something called SourceTree. Source tree is some software created by Atlassian, I believe they purchased a source tree. And uh, it's awesome Git software, although you can use the Git Hub software if you prefer, but I'm, I'm, I've been a source tree user for a while. So I'm going to use source tree. So here we have source tree open. And um, once you have that installed, you're going to want to add the GitHub account. So you'll want to go into settings and add your GitHub account. I won't go over that in this video, but you'll want to do that. And then you want to go to clone new, go back to your GitHub, and go to click under code, copy the HTTPS URL, and you're, you're going to clone that to your computer. So I'm going to create something here. Um, do this and see if it identifies it. Looks like it worked. So under users david development melee center, that's what it will be, and that'll be the root. That looks good, so I'm going to click clone. And if this happens correctly, I should see a readme.md file in here. And look at that, readme.md is the initial commit. So what I have here on source tree matches what I have on GitHub right here. So what I'll do next is I'm going to copy all these files. And I'm going to move them to the directory. And here is where I'm going to paste the files. So what I've done here is I've basically just taken all the files from the HTML5 website. I've dumped them into this folder. And source tree is going to recognize those changes. And it's going to say there's some uncommitted changes. And this is a good example where you might you might want to utilize git ignore. So for example, if you're using PSD files for Photoshop or if you're using files you don't necessarily want pushed, this is an opportunity where you can right click an unwanted uh, type of file 
and click ignore. And in this case, I don't want to just ignore this exact file name. I want to ignore all files with the .zip extension because I don't want those on my website. Now, of course, I don't recommend you do this necessarily. You might just want to exclude the one file, but for my purposes, I'm going to exclude all files with the extension. Click OK. So now the .getIgnore file gets generated and includes .zip to ignore. So I, once I'm ready, I'm going to click Stage All, Commit. These are all the files that I'll be pushing. I'm just going to say initial website example from HTML5 up. All right, and I'm going to click Commit. And after a little bit, it's going to finish pushing and committing these changes. And now if we go to GitHub and I refresh this page, hopefully it'll show all those new files. Look at that. There they all are. So now back on Netlify, let's check it out and see if uh, it's live yet. So let's go to site settings and let's change the site name. Let's say, for example, you don't want to use a custom domain name. I'll call this melee-center.netlifyapp.com or .app.netlify.app, I should say. And now it's live. So let's visit the website and see what it looks like. Okay, so pretty incredible. This has in, I don't even know how long it's been, in about five minutes, we have our own website with our own custom theme that we can edit. And that was incredibly easy. So now, for example, if you want to start modifying the content of the website, this is when you'll use like, you know, VS Code or, you know, even you can technically even use Notepad if you'd like, or Notepad, Notepad++. But for my use, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. And you can see here, this is all the source code for the site. And in terms of a workflow that I would recommend, I would have, uh, I have multiple monitors, but let's say you only have one monitor. To test this, I would do something like, let's change the headline. So um, let's drag this into a tab here on Firefox. Okay, here's what it looks like. So I'm gonna search, so here we can see the phrase, I am Strata, which is the example of a template. So I'm gonna change this to my name, I am David. A, I'll just say a content creator. And I'm going to erase all this. Now, remember, you have to keep the attribution in here. So you need to include that you got this from HTML5 up, which is going to be persistent in this footer down here. So I'm going to hit save, control S, going to refresh, check it out, instant change. And let's say I like that change. I don't want to make any other changes. All I have to do is go back to source tree. It's going to find the changes that I made. I'm going to click commit. It's going to find that HTML5 change, and here's the exact change I made. I got rid of these lines, and I added this line. So let's stage it and say, replace it with, replace the first line with my name. And these little messages are just helpful for yourself. If you're trying to look back and say, why did I make this particular change? You'll have a historical list of that. Now, because it's deploying with Netlify through GitHub, that is all I have to do. So I'm going to close out of this, go back to our actual website, which is melee-center.netlify.app. Here's the old one. Let's hit refresh and see if it updated. Look at that. It updated. So yes, you'll need to have a little bit of HTML and CSS knowledge to get this to work. But assuming you don't want to change anything about the style or the, you know, the, the CSS, this is a pretty simple workflow. So the other example I want to show you is let's say I want to change this blank picture with a picture of myself. You want to get creative and figure out how things are kind of laid out in the template. So let's see. So it looks like here we have images slash avatar dot JPEG. And this just means from the root slash images slash avatar. So let's see if we can find that. So we have the images folder here. And here we have the avatar dot JPEG folder. Let's say I have my own profile picture that I want to copy into that. I'll just copy my profile picture real quick. Okay, here it is. If I want to make this super easy, I can either either just delete this and call this avatar.jpg if I want. Let's preview that and see if that worked. Look at that, already replaced it. Or I can simply go into the code and you know name this file whatever I want. I can call this profile. And then I just need to make sure to change this to match. As I, as I start typing Visual Studio Code knows, can identify the files in, in there and it will autocomplete for me. I'll hit save and now I'll push through git to the repository. It's noting that we deleted a file and added a new one. And we changed a line of code, or a couple lines. Added my profile picture. Commit. 
And again, this is a lot of stuff happening at once. When I click commit here, it's pushing to this GitHub repository, which is a private GitHub repository. And then Netlify, because of our integrations, is basically taking that information and deploying it and generating a website from it. And here we have on the live website, all the changes that we've made. So the final step here is adding our own custom domain name. After you get familiar and comfortable with replacing some of the content on the page, you customize it to be what you want. Now let's add our own custom domain name. So to do that, you're going to want to manage your DNS records. And your Netlify page is going to give you instructions for how to do that. So make sure, first of all, that you're on your website in Netlify and you go to Site Settings. Domain Management. And here, it'll let you add a custom domain. So it's not immediately obvious how you do this. Let's say I try to add it right away. Melee.center. It's going to say, hey, um, you have to add the domain. So let's add the domain. And it's not configured with the DNS. So that's the reason we went to our DNS configuration here, because we'll be changing that to match up with what they suggest. So here, here, here are the instructions. Um, now, ideally, they'll talk about using a, an alias, but for most, you'll use point A records because that's kind of the more typical implementation. So this says create an A record for melee.center pointing to our load balancer's IP address. So in this case, this is the IP address we'll be using. And here is the A record. We're going to delete the existing A records and we're going to do an at symbol and do this. And we're going to delete the old one. And then we're going to do a www, do the same thing. And we're going to delete the old one with these old, this old IP address. So we're going to click Save DNS Settings. In fact, you can change the time to live time to live in seconds. By default, it's a certain number, but you can change that. So I'm going to click Save DNS on I Want My Name. And those have been processed. Now, when this gets sent to DNS servers, note it might take a little bit of time. So just be patient. Sometimes it takes within the hour. Sometimes it can take up to 12 hours. It kind of depends. So we've followed these instructions. So let's see if let, let's see if this will work. If uh, yeah, I could try refreshing right now, but I doubt it'll be ready by then. Okay, that's actually crazy. So on this side, it looks like it's happy, but usually it takes a little bit longer than that. Let's go to melee.center and see what happens. All right, so right now it's still redirecting to my old other website, so this will take some time, but. The very last step for configuring your domain is to generate an SSL certificate for HTTPS. Because for modern web standards, you want HTTPS. You don't want to be stuck with HTTP because your browser will tell your user that your website is insecure. So let's verify a DNS configuration. It looks like that was successful. And then we'll click provision certificate. So this is automatic. And Netlify will do this. Okay, so it looks like it's not completely happy with our DNS yet. And that's, again, most likely because it takes some time to actually propagate this to all the servers. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait a little bit. I'll come back to you later, and we'll see if we get our Melee.Center domain name. I'll be right back. All right. Well, welcome back. It has not been very long. It's been mere minutes. And what I did was I used a different browser to load Melee.Center, and sure enough, it's already live. And in fact, if you click this, you'll see HTTPS has already been added. So <laughs> what's amazing is Netlify provisioned us an SSL certificate. We got a website published and running. We made some edits in under 10 minutes or so. So you can spin up a website incredibly quickly. And then at this point, it's just a matter of changing all this default information. So I can just go back into our our file, and this is only one file we're editing, index.html. And I can change anything here and hit simply save the file, make sure I deploy it with source tree, and it's live. There is no more setup required. Uh, we, we finished our domain, our custom domain that we have. We've finished our workflow. We've completed our integration with Netlify and GitHub, so we are finished. I hope you got value out of this tutorial. And if you want some examples of live websites that currently use this, uh, blippy.gg, which you saw earlier, is one of them. This is entirely run off that system. It also includes other web pages other than a home page. So it's multiple pages. It's got 
some custom JavaScript on it for this feature, for example, of like collapsing and loading lists. It has custom scripts that have an image over a video. So it has a bunch of custom stuff too, but it just shows how versatile these are. Um, for example, this is a template also from HTML5 up, which I believe is called hyperspace. So if you want to use the same one, you can do that. In fact, if you really want to copy this one to one, you can visit my GitHub page and go to blippy.gg and actually fork it yourself. And when you do that, you know, a lot of the process is saved for you. A lot of the work's been done for you. The very, very last thing I want to direct your attention to that's Netlify specific is this underscore redirects file. So what's amazing about this is you can set up custom redirects. So if you ever wanted to do your website.com slash, you know, support or something like that, then if you do your website.com slash support, it'll go to this other link. So for example, if I go to blippy.gg slash support, it won't go to another page on the site, it'll forward to my Patreon page. So you can do really cool things like that. And um, I, I do recommend that you look look up the underscore redirects file. Let's say I wanted to create that for this uh, test website, this Melia Center website. All you have to do is create, just click new, you say new text file, and then just do underscore redirects. And Windows won't be happy that there's no uh, file extension, that's okay, click yes. And um, to match the format of the redirects file, you'll want to start with the slash name of what you want, and then a full address to where it goes. So I'll show you an example of this. So here's the underscore redirects file that we made. I'm going to open that with, let's say, uh, notepad++. You can use whatever you want. You can use VS Code. And so let's say I want slash um, test to go to my personal website, davidvkimble.com, and I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to source tree. It's going to prompt me with the change that it's finding, which is this uh, redirects file. We're going to stage it. We're going to say added some redirects. So now let's give it a shot on our Chrome browser. Again, the reason why it, it's working on Chrome and it's not working yet on Firefox is because of caching. So somewhere in the world, most places in the world, Melee.Center is going to work properly. So now, if I try to do melee.center slash test, will it go to my website? Let's find out. It does. So that's how you can create your own custom redirects. Okay, now I think I'm really done this time. I hope you got value out of this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.